everybody, how's it going? So got something really exciting here today. Gonna be checking out the brand new Infinity Strip from PSP AudioWare. Now, if you guys are wondering who the hell PSP is, 19 years ago, they released the very first plugin that could be considered a classic, and that was the Vintage Warmer. Now that plugin went up on countless records and PSP didn't stop there. They've gone on to release all kinds of awesome EQs and reverbs and mastering plugins, you name it but they've also spent the last seven years working on the Infinity Strip. What's it sound like? Let's check it out. All right, so we've moved over to the desktop and you guys know when we move over to the desktop, it's gonna get serious. All right, now I'm sure the first question everybody has is, okay, Glenn, stop wasting our time. Let's hear it. What's the big deal all about? Okay, well, this is what it sounds like on a full mix. Okay. So we've got the amazing Eric Arco on bass and guitar there and the ever-talented Jackson Ward on the drums. And uh, these guys cooked something up for me a couple days ago, and I thought, hey, this would be really cool to use on this demo. Now, like I said, I've been kind of playing with this off and on uh, ever since I found out about it in January. Um, I got a copy of it maybe six weeks ago and just been tweaking away, kind of learning the system. And Because I want to make sure I, I kind of hit this thing on all points. Now, this is one of the more crazier drum mixes I have ever done. Like if I just throw on my drum bus here. All right, so this is almost completely pure PSP processing going on here. I've got the uh, Infinity Strip on all the close mics. I've got the uh, 2445 reverb going on, and this is kind of like this is a digital emulation of the old EMT reverb, which is just super cool. A little bit going on the two bus with the bus presser and the Xenon for limiting. And yeah, pretty damn cool. So let's get right into it here. Let's show you guys what's going on with the close mics, and then I'm gonna show you how I fit it all together and how I'm getting such an explosive sound. So here is the snare untouched, just a top and bottom mic put to one channel here. If we kick this on, here's our channel here. We got we got a mic preamp, we've got a gate. Does it just give us, oh, it gives us a gate and a docker. Okay, that's really cool. What's super important about this interface is these little arrows we have at the top, and this allows us to change out the various effects. So we've got a mic preamp, a gate, um, a little bit of basic filtering, compressor, EQ, and a backend limiter as well. And then we've got options here to throw on a whole crap ton of other stuff as well, you know, for flavor, or, you know, there's a de or a de-hummer, so if you pick up that 60 cycle hum, you can definitely take that out. The de is really great, and I'm gonna show you what that's like on a vocal coming up a bit later in the episode. So we've got an expander, gate, and ducker. That's super cool. And it's, it's pretty simple stuff to understand, but just to show you guys what kind of different flavors we can get very quickly, um, let me change out the preamp and the compressor and EQ to various settings. So we've got a bunch of different preamps here. 80s preamp, which is like SSL. 70s, more Neve style. 60s, tube style. And now the 90s, this is a mimicking a 12-bit analog to digital converter uh, like you would find on some of the earliest digital recorders found in home studios in the 90s. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea to put in. I'm like, well, I always hated the sound of that shit, but hey, whatever. You know, whatever uh, floats your boat. But this is, this is super cool. I got to say, I like this gate a lot more than I should because it doesn't have a look ahead. But it's got a lot of snap. It'll open up at 0.1 milliseconds, but it does not look ahead, which is something I've, I've been used to using in Reaper for ages and ages. But you know what? I'm not really missing it. This sounds really fucking good. You got all your basic controls, um, you know, how how the hold for how long the gate stays open, your threshold and your range, which is kind of like your noise floor. We can bring this up and down. We can take it out completely. I 
I gotta say, that gate is super effective. I like the shape control too, because it just kind of ramps the gate in and out. Now this is where it gets really cool is where we start playing with the compressors here. So we've got it for a VA, VCA type compressor. So this is what you would find, say like on an SSL console. And then you've got an opto and what else we got here? And a FET. So a FET being like an 1176 style compressor and opto like LA2A. Let's hear how it sounds on the snare. Let's see what we get here. You hear that? That really changes the, the way how the attack sounds. Um, there's a pretty big difference between, say, the VCA and the Opto. The FET, I, I'm kind of dig too. It's a, the VCA is really snappy. The FET's a little bit different, and then the Opto is really different. So. Not that big of a difference here on this. Um, you might hear some differences, say, in the bass guitar or the kick drum or something like that. We're going to check that out a little bit. And we've got a bunch of different EQs here as well. We've got the channel Q, which is like SSL, kind of feels like. And again, the uh, we've got the Neve style and then the tube style. Tube style definitely sounds a little bit different. And you just ch choose your frequency here, and then your booster cut. You get a couple different shelf types, peaking, that kind of thing. And then same kind of idea here. You just twist knobs. It definitely feels like an analog console. And you even got a couple of different back-end limiters here, which is great. Got a VCA-style limiter, and then an opto. So that's the unaffected signal right there. Put that in the mix. Put a little bit of that verb back in. And the crush mics. And let's, let's check out what's going on with the kick drum here. So here's our kick bus. That's a nice kick sound. And I got a slightly slower attack going on the kick. That really reminds me of my DBX 160 XTs, just the way how, how that uh, attack on the gate works. And just kind of hits it kind of the same way. It's got that feel. Go from VCA. Again, real subtle shifts in flavor. You know, again, you got your basic filters here. Just lets you do your roll-offs. Super easy to use. And then your channel EQs. Wow. You hear just kind of how the top end is affected on that kick drum just by changing out the different EQ styles. That is super cool. And I've never seen another plugin do this where you get a rack system like this. You can try out several different EQs and it maintains your EQ settings from version to version. I've not seen that anywhere. I've seen it on the Shep's Omni channel with the, with the dynamic section, but not with an EQ section. That's super cool. And again, you can change out the preamps. Wow, the 80s really got that, that Metallica snap. And that's just totally changing the shape. And you got the drive knob, you can crank that right up. Which gets a little farty. Except on the 80s. It's a little fatter with the FET compressor there. VCA is a little bit tighter. Pretty damn cool. Now, 
Let me show you what's going on here with the crush mics because this is just, I've never actually done this before on a, on a, on a crush bus before, and this is just all kinds of fun. So if we, if we just sole this up, take a look here. I've got, I got a little creative here. If we take that off, here's, here's our initial sound. It's just close mics, kick, snare, toms, none of the overheads, that kind of thing. Now what I did here was I'm hitting I'm hitting the crush mics like I normally would, you know, just really hard with a with a compressor, just basically everything just at maximum, uh, very fast attack and release, low threshold, you know, infinite ratio. We're just hitting it hard. We're taking a bit of the bottom end off and driving it with the preamp as well here. Mute that. But I got thinking, what happens if we, you know, compress the crap out of it and then hit it even harder? And drive at maximum on both these. And then a little bit of limiting. The insane thing here is, and this is what blows me away, is listen to that snare. It's explosive, but we're not getting massive amounts of hat bleed because the gate that we used on the close mic on the snare that I already showed you is so effective. Drop that in the mix. If we take those crush mics out, That's nice. Crush mics are insane. Great thing is, now the great thing is we can bring these extra modules that I'm using for distortion on the, on the crush mics, we can bring these in and out and just use it as we see fit. Solo this. That is super cool. Now, just for processing on baser, we've got a preamp cranked up. Want that kind of you know that kind of grindy Getty Lee thing going on, um, you know, with that with that kind of pronounced mid range. So we're just driving it here and driving it afterwards as well. If I mute that out, it's already a pretty driven sound through Parallax. I'm just kind of smoothing things out even more with the Infinity Strip. A little bit of compression, a little bit of EQ right at nearly two kilohertz. Here's the EQ adjustment right here. And again, we can change out the EQ types. Here's our bandwidth selector. Or here's our band selector, gain and width. So narrow boost, wide. Now I gotta note, this EQ's kinda cool. It reminds me a lot of analog gear because it really forces you to listen with your ears because we don't have a graph showing us exactly what's going on. We just gotta kinda tweak the knobs a little bit until we hear something we like. And that's a cool way to work. It really is. Visual feedback's great. Uh, this is a, a different way to do it and I kinda like it, to be honest with you. It definitely does remind me of how it used to be done and that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're in a graphical display EQ, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But there's more than one way to, to do this. And I got to say, I kind of like the approach that they're using here. It definitely has a lot of that old school analog gear feel. And of course, we're using it on guitar as well. There's our raw tone. Just a little bit of drive with a preamp and some real basic filtering. Just taking some of the fizz out, 
and a little bit of a top end boost afterwards. So we're getting that kind of Pultec effect. And just a tiny bit of limiting on the guitars just to smooth them out a little bit. Want to be bright without being fizzy. Again, I got the I got the Infinity Strip on all my Tom channels and uh, Drum Room too. It's especially fun. I'm kind of curious what would happen if we put a little bit of that distortion onto the room mics. I love smashing the shit out of room mics. I really. This is cool. So I got maximum drive here. Hitting it hard with the VCA compressor. Let's just add a little something here. And we can drag and drop this anywhere we want in the chain. Great. I love how you can solo this up and just show exactly what the hell is going on. Try out the different compressors here. Yeah, the VCA is definitely the most aggressive, and on this this source, I definitely want to get a little more aggressive with it. Let's try out the different limiter types. Sure, that mixed together. VCA limiters are definitely a lot more aggressive. I like that with the extra distortion, though, from from the extra preamp. That's just too much fun. Just flattens out that much more. All right, just quickly, we're going to take a look at a vocal. This is from that mix I did last year, Like a Fusion. This had Trey Watson on vocals. And uh, it was a cover of an anime song, actually, and uh, went like this. Deep down, I feel just like a pet. They call my name. Now sit, roll over, rub, now play dead. No, thank you. I got what I need, what it's just you and me. That's when my mind is free. Just thinking of you, it gets me. Got that wonderful PSP 2445 reverb on the vocal as well. Just really becoming one of my favorites, to be honest with you. Deep down. I feel just like a pet, they call my name. I just want to show you what's going on here. Blake, dad, no thank you. I got what I need when it's just you and me. We turn that off. Deep down, I feel just like a pet, they call my name. Now sit, roll over, run. It's a little, it's a little, uh, money, shall we say? Yeah, so down, not much I going on like here. Pet, they call my name. Now sit, roll over, run. Now Blake, dad, no thank you. I got what I need when it's just you and me. That's when my Add a little bit of drive. Thinking of you, it gets me through all the things that they do. Rolling off a I little bit here on the bottom. Well, they're in the place left to go. Trying to make me see and not find not bleed. This is my best. Hit it pretty hard with the compressor. Yo, I'm coming at you. But this is where it gets interesting. What we're doing is we're we're giving it a pretty healthy boost right about 7 kilohertz on the vocal just to Deep down, brighten I things feel up. Just like a pet, they call my name. Now sit, roll over, rub, now play dead. No thank you. I got and a little cut, mid-range cut. That's when my mind is free. Just thinking of you, it gets me through all the things that they do. Bottom I boost. jump to the fire. Well, the and then we're adding a de-esser right on the very end. So we... 
Deep down, I feel just like a pet. They call my name. Now sit, roll over, up. Now play dad. No, thank you. I got what I need when it's just you and me. That's when my mind is free. Just thinking of you, it gets me through all the dialing. Things and just do. to take off, to take the edge off those harsh sibilant words, but it's gonna stay bright for the rest of it. So it's just gonna lean in on like the S's and that sort of Deep thing. Deep down, I feel just like a pet. They call frequency, my name. how wide now it is, roll over, range, all that. Dad, no, thank you. I got what two to one, four to one ratio, and a couple different modes as well. Super useful just to have it right there. Things that they do. I jump to the fire with the other place left to go. Trying to make me see and I find out bleed. This is my best. Going to the test. Yo, I'm doing it to both your places. Full power, double shot with a knockout punch. Then your ass is on the floor. Right up just a touch here. So we can double that up. Fly away now. Out the window. Here we go. Bring that down a bit. I also forgot that now this isn't a vocal writer, but this is something where you can set a reference volume level and it will attempt to adjust things for you. So I'm going to set the reference up a little bit higher. And then this is what it's going to do is it's going to listen to it, make a few adjustments, kind of find the average volume level and then kind of set it from there. Deep down, I feel just like a pet. Watch right here. My name. Now sit, roll over, rub, now play dead. No, thank you. I got what I need when it's just you and me. That's when my mind is free. Just thinking of you, it gets me through all the things that they do. I jump to the vibe with the other place left to go. Trying to make me see and I find out bleed. This is my best. Coming to the test. Yo, I'm doing it to both bears placing. Full power, double shot with a knockout punch. Then your ass is on the that's pretty useful for getting a, a quick average level. Set a reference, hit the auto button, and away you go. It's not going to ride it, which is kind of a bummer. I, I would really like to see that in an upcoming version. But uh, just for a holy crap, like, let's get some levels and get this mix happening. That is a massive time saver right there. Just kind of grabs the peaks, figures out what's what, and boom, spits it out there. You're done. Good. Move on to the next thing. That's super cool. All right, so that's the Infinity Strip. I gotta say, I really enjoy working with it. I think it's gonna wind up on a lot of my mixes in the immediate future, just because of the flexibility of it. I love the fact that we can swap out the different EQs and we can change the chains and we can add a whole bunch of other crap. Um, now, before I forget, I wrote this down, so I got this right. There are 22 modules total. There's seven slots and two inserts. Now, I normally don't really use the inserts in my mixing, but it might be very useful in your workflow. That's the cool thing about this is it's flexible enough to allow you to work the way how you want. I also talked to the company. They said more modules are on the way. Personally, I would love to see a tape saturation simulation we could put in, like, say, right at the beginning before it hits anything else. That way we're mimicking an actual analog signal path like we used to back in the 70s and 80s when we were all still working with two-inch tape. Now, price is $199, but if you use the discount code INFINITY for Glenn, you'll get 20% off. And if you want to grab any of their other plugins, you can also get 10% off if you use the discount code Glenn Rolls. All right, just for the record, those discount codes were their idea, not mine. Now, I've been having an awful lot of fun working with this plugin over the last couple of weeks. I'd highly recommend following the link in the description below and checking it out for yourself. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys next time.